Brian Moss, Norman, joined by Husker Online's Brian Munson here on our Allo Fiber VIP line. Uh, Brian, I was telling you off air that I do know it's uh, pronounced Mose now, but then you hit me with a number, another stumper. No, I do not know how to pronounce the new recruit's last name. You got me there. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, uh, it was kind of a mystery to me, too, until this morning when uh, Sean Callahan gave me a buzz and told me it is pronounced, and this is, I, I couldn't have guessed this in a million tries, Pedshock. Pedshock? Yeah, just like pedestrian, and like, I got shocked. It's Pedshock. Huh? So, yeah, no, that came straight from a, uh, a television anchor up there in, in Fargo, North Dakota. So, um, Ped Shock is the way that you pronounce the last name. That's uh, very interesting, but uh, that is that is the pronunciation. So, I, I'm also a Duke basketball fan on the side. So, like, I, I get Shashevsky, right? I, I know that one, mm. but Ped Shock? Ped Shock. I don't know how you get it out of there either. Because, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't even know, like, what, you know, I mean, Shashevsky, I'm assuming, is Polish. Yes. But Ped Shock is... I don't know. I mean, I, 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 Baltic. I'm guessing some way, somehow, but I don't know what the what like the uh, the, the ancestry would kind of trace its way, trace its race back uh, its way back to. But yeah, Ped Shock is the way you pronounce it. Okay, so I just looked it up. Just I just typed in the last name for those who don't know, spelled P I E T R Z A K. And the first person that comes up is this dude named Jan Ped Shock, who is from Warsaw, Poland. So that is also Polish, apparently. There you go. Yeah. Well, being part Polish myself, I, you know, tell you what, you never put it past them. You never know how the pronunciations are going to kind of work out, but that, that, that is it. Pet shock. And speaking of uh, Polish, let's flip it to Polish. How polished is pet shocks game for the college level right now? You know what? He, um, he is, his film is absolutely amazing to watch. Um, I really, you know, once he kind of showed up on the radar, I think it was last year for the NIU game was the first time he made it to Lincoln. And um, I remember kind of doing the visitor preview, kind of checking it out, kind of going through this thing. And I'm like, holy cow, this kid's film was something. And, you know, obviously he's been able to put his junior film down on top of that. You know, he's a six foot five, 255, 245 pound ish, you know, kind of guy that plays both both ways and uh as an offensive tackle he he shows that he is just a punishing blocker he will chase down his guy as his guy is flowing away from him and end up with pancakes like when you think there would be no way for him to do it he finishes um and he shows like incredible athleticism he has got he has got speed um it, it, and, and basically those things kind of translate to the other side of the football. He, he has got a tremendous get off on the, on the snap. Um, he, I compared him to Grant Wistrom, uh, in my, uh, like, what does it mean for Nebraska article that we ran after his commitment? Uh, I know people are going to so say, Oh, that's just, you know, it's a little lost, but I tell you what, I don't know if Nebraska's had another defensive end. You know, Kyle Vandenbosch, I guess I probably would need to need to retract that. Uh, but they, they are in desperate need of a, of a five technique that can just go to work on an offensive tackle. And, and what that does, basically, when you can just kind of isolate that matchup, when you take that – you take that blind side guy or that big right offensive tackle and you can kind of put that five technique up against him and he can get some bat and he can he can win some of those matches he can win some of those matchups you make things very very difficult as an offense to kind of scheme for the defense you you make them account for a guy like pet shock um you potentially have to hold in uh running backs to to chip and double team you 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 obviously then would do different things to try to you know find ways to kind of to kind of go away from him but obviously he's a He's a, he's got a motor and he's got a way of chasing things down from the backside too. Uh, I'm very I, I think Nebraska fans should be ecstatic, not just about Ted Shock, but how Coach Knighton and Coach Rule are putting together this defensive line group inside the 2025 class. When you consider that the top two commitments in the class are both defensive linemen, uh, they're not identical in size necessarily. Malcolm Simpson's a little bit shorter than than Ted Shock is. Um, but they're about the same weight and, and really Malcolm's more of a, 
guy that can kind of play inside, maybe go out to a four, and then Pet Shock's more of a five seven guy that you could potentially move down to a three. You get some versatility there between those two guys, and of course, then you put Tyson Terry in the middle. And Tyson's one of those guys that's tremendous motor again, great get off. You know, all those guys are pin your ears back, go get the quarterback kind of defensive lineman. So I really think that this is an underrated group, you know, within the class. I, I, I just, they have really rocketed to the top of, of like being the strongest part of the class for sure for Nebraska, but head shock is a big, big reason why. I mean, and that one was something that, that really turned from Oklahoma to Nebraska very, very recently. So I think that this is just good old fashioned, you know, um, just kind of, putting a nose down to the grindstone and, and getting after a little bit. And I think coach Knight and coach white and coach rule all did a tremendous job recruiting him. Is there an aspect of this again, coming from uh, Fargo, North Dakota, right? We talked about this with, I believe it was uh, grant bricks just across the river in Iowa, right? Dominating at a, a lower level. Is there some projection with him where you have to take the film with a grain of salt or how do, how do you judge that? Maybe a little bit, but I, the, the intangibles that are there for both are undeniable. I mean, Bricks was a, a low pad level guy and lower, you know, lower body was incredibly strong. He had tree trunks for legs, uh, great motor, you know, strong, you know, strong as an ox, you know, kind of mm-hmm. thing. And I, I, I think Ped Shock has kind of got those similarities. You got tremendous athlete, tremendous quickness, um, great frame, you know, that you can kind of build on. I, I think it's also kind of interesting. And I mentioned this like in the story as well, you know, you take Sean Hammerbeck and Hammerbeck's a very similar looking kind of dude as Ped Shock. You know, they're both, they're both two way linemen, you know, offensive tackles, defensive ends, you know, and really Hammerbeck's more of a tight end um, than it is an offensive tackle. But but similarly, they, they, they have the they have same kind of makeup, you know, physical stature. Uh, I would give the edge athletically uh, to Ped Shock over Hammerbeck, and that's maybe why you see Hammerbeck, you know, kind of more projected to play, you know, the offensive tackle position at Nebraska, while you're looking at a Ped Shock to potentially play more of a, you know, hand in the dirt, you know, three point, you know, five five technique or seven technique as a defensive end. So I, I, I really feel like there's, there's a lot of versatility and a lot of guys that they're kind of going after that, that look similar. I even kind of throw that Malcolm Simpson back in there again, a little bit that can kind of go do some things. If you look at some of the wide receivers, like compare like a Jackson Carpenter to a Tanner Turch to a Bryson Hayes, very similar looking guys on both sides of the football there, even throw like a Caden Vermas in as well. Um, so I, I think that they've really found, you know, what they're looking for at those spots. And I think, I think Nebraska is doing just a tremendous job hitting that defensive line group this year. And if you take it back even a year before, right, you have, you have Ped Shock, and then you have Jason Mishashak, right? Hard names to pronounce yep. from a Dakota. How did, how did the, uh, the South Dakota or the Dakota guys, the hammer back in the, the Ped Shock compare to uh, like where Jason Mishashak was at the same point last year? <laughs> Yeah, you know, and that's interesting because think about Mashechek. Mashechek is a guy that was really kind of grabbed to play on one side of the football and has moved, I think, twice since he's gotten to Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he has tremendous versatility. Obviously, he was a track guy. You know, he was, there there were video of him out there throwing that. um, that practice shot put, I think, in the gym, like he was throwing it across the entire gym, which is just, <laughs> that's just insane. But I mean, you have, you have great explosiveness, you have great strength uh, in athleticism that was there. And, and I, I, I think that you're getting very similar dudes. Mashechek, more of an inside guy, Hammerbeck, you know, pet shock, more uh, outside guys. But I, I think what you're still seeing there is you, you, you could potentially have that flexibility, you know, if things kind of move the other way. And let's say Pet Shock, you know, all of a sudden he's looking 285, 290, and it's like, gosh, he would be a killer as a as a left tackle, you know, or, or, or whatever. I mean, I'm not saying necessarily that would happen, but I'm saying that they are all kind of look similarly that where, they, you know, they're having to play on both sides of the football, and they're both really, really – they're all three of them are really strong guys, great athletes in their own right – just slight variances, you know, among all three of them. We're talking with Brian Munson of Husker online here on uh, 93.7 to take in our aloe fiber VIP line. Brian, let's look 
outside of Nebraska specifically, if you're a recruiting analyst looking in at this Nebraska class for 2025, who's the headliner or the two headlining players, maybe from an outside perspective? Hmm. You know, I, I, I think it does. I know Simpson's going to be the number one rated guy in the class, according to on three. And uh, I, I, I think he's worthy to be in the discussion. I think Pedshock also deserves to be in that discussion there. I think a Jamarian Parker, you know, is definitely a guy that, that Nebraska fans, you know, need to be kind of figuring into the conversation there a little bit as well. Um, some of the later guys that kind of just committed like a Hammerbeck and a, and, and a, even like a Bryson Weber, you know, Bryson Weber had some, had some teams really pushing for him at the, at the end too, to kind of keep his, you know, top three where, where it was kind of at. I mean, I know that there were other schools, big 10 schools that were checking in on him a little bit. And, and obviously you still have an elite 11 quarterback in there and TJ Latif, you know, that kind of gets some recognition. So I, I think from like a, top five, top six, you know, kind of running it down. You're, you know, you're Jamarian Parker, you're Kate Petshock, you're Sean Hammerbeck, you're uh, obviously you're, you're Malcolm Simpson, um, Bryson Weber. You know, I think all those guys are in some sort of a discussion, but I give, I give, I give an edge to the two defensive linemen at the top of the class right now. Flipping that question around again from the outside perspective, who are maybe some of the underrated guys that you think have a chance to to make some people on the outside know their name before they're said and done at Nebraska? Yeah, I mean it, it's hard to kind of overlook, you know, where Connor Booth and Jackson Carpenter and Bryson Hayes are kind of at. Um, I'll, you know, I think what really stands out to me about like Carpenter and Hayes is that you have very similar stature, very similar athleticism, same size, same kind of speed. You know, you start talking about 10, six, 100 guys. And really for Carpenter, it's like, um, you know, he got that, he gets that really good time as, you know, his first sprint or first track meet, uh, basically his junior year, you know, then, then kind of tweaks, you know, a, a hamstring or has a leg injury, you know, in a relay and says, what am I doing? You know, it's like, I'm trying to get faster to, to, to play football. And it seems like you're, you're kind of burning the candle at both ends, you know, with what you're kind of trying to do. So you, you, he needed to kind of limit some things down, get back to training, getting his body ready. I don't think that people really understand the athleticism that I think is there with like Carpenter and, and Hayes. And, and I, I'll tell you this, I, I, I feel very good, very positive in saying this. And, and, and I don't, I don't feel bad doing it at all. Had Connor Booth decided to take some camps this summer, I really feel like he could have blown the lid off of, you know, uh, basically just, you know, where people say, well, you only end up having one football offer from Nebraska. Yeah. He only went and took that one camp. He had one camp, mm-hmm. one offer. He ran a four five and that, that's a big old dude at six, one, two fifteen. And uh, I, I think that he's going to have a, another big year this fall. And I think that if he would have had a chance to, to go, check out some SEC schools and some Big Ten schools just because I know how well he did at the the uh, Army All-American Combine or the All-American Combine, excuse me, in San Antonio in January. I think he could have opened up a lot of eyes nationally. Last thing for you then, Brian, Big Ten Media Days tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. We know that the focus is going to be on the current teams, but if you're Matt Rule at the podium, we know you're yeah. always thinking about recruiting as any head coach. How do you use your your appearance at the podium and the three players that you brought along to, to sell your program to recruits while you're in Indy. Well, he's, he's so tremendously polished. He's such a, he's such a great speaker. Uh, I, I think you, you let him go out there and you start talking about the optimism and what, you know, how you've been able to kind of build this program, change the culture at Nebraska. You know, people need to kind of come in and see that. You need, need to start talking about, you know, where they're at as a, you know, kind of hitting their stride as a program, you know, or, or they were so close a year again, uh, a, a year before and kind of similar story, you know, still can't win those close type games, still kind of shooting yourself in the foot and how you're trying to lock those things down. And you feel like you've got the right support structure in place from a personnel pr- perspective. The staff is right. You feel like you've got the best facilities in the country. You feel like you're grabbing the right kinds of guys, you know, that, that, you, that you want to fill your program with, that you want to put into your locker room and put into your team rooms. 
Uh, and you have to just feel good about where things are at, and you get to feel great about where that defense is at. I mean, so I, I, I think that there, while there are still some question marks, I think one of the cornerback positions, you know, in general, I think you can go back and start feeling really good about where the defensive line is at, and and and, and the pro, and the, the playmakers you have on offense. I think there's just a ton of potential there, and lots of new faces, and I think that you can sell, you know, if you come in and you're good enough to play you will play. And that's what they're telling these guys in the class. I mean, it's, it's really a huge selling point for the players that have committed to Nebraska this year. It's Brian Munson of Husker online with us here on our Allo fiber VIP line. Brian, as always appreciate the time nine days away from camp. We hope to talk to you one more time before that gets going here at the start of August. Almost there guys. We'll talk to you soon.